Hello everyone, Dr. Ross is back in outer space again with a quick overview of some slides I posted on calculations. So again, I'm not going to read through the slides. You don't need um, you don't need me to do that. You can read. But I just want to point out, emphasize the important point of the slides, and that is the technique. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and I'll I'll eventually post this video to accompany the slides. So essentially, I just want to comment on dimensional analysis. So everyone in the class has already met the mathematical prerequisites determined by, um, by the college. So that's fine. But you might not have used this specific technique before. Um, this technique is related to algebra. Um, the harder you look, you see it's more like algebra than, than anything else, but it's definitely not you can definitely present in a non-dimensional analysis way. Regardless of your mathematical prowess, you're required to master dimensional analysis and show mastery of it in this class. To the extent that this is the only type of calculation I'll accept. Okay. So dimensional analysis is also known as factor labeling. So it's known by that name also. And essentially it's looking at fractions. So dimensional analysis is looking at fractions. So for example, you convert equalities to fractions. So if you know that, um, if you know, for example, that A uh, equals B, that's an equality. because it's, there's an equal sign, right? Well, this means that you can say A divided by B or B divided by A. And so there's a 50% chance that you're gonna use it correctly and the deadlock is broken, the choice is made because you're either after the numerator in your answer or the denominator. So for example, if we look at this specific question here, which is a non-chemistry example, um, um, it looks like, so if I interpret this question here at the bottom, it says 30 hours at a rate of $9 an hour is $270. So a question might be, you know, if I get paid $9 an hour and I work for 30 hours, how much money am I going to take home? Um, notice this was an equality. So this rate was an equality. So I know that $9 is equal to one hour of work. So I can either have one hour over $9, or I can write $9 over one hour. Why would I know to use this one on this occasion? Well, I need a dollar as a as a result, right? So that set dollar as a numerator, and it told me to use the fraction from the equality that had dollar as a numerator. Notice that I only have dollars in my answer, so the hour denominator here must have canceled with this hour in the input. Um, so it's essentially input, a number of equalities, then output. And I have separate videos on this, so this is just to alert you to it on day one. Um, in any work that you submit in our class, any calculations must be used in dimensional analysis only, please. And this goes for the lab simulations also. Um, if there's any in lab, which there won't be, but so I don't have to make a separate video. But for now, we're doing lab simulations. All calculations have to be dimensional analysis. Uh, otherwise, points start to disappear. Um, so that's fine, and I, I'm certainly not going to go through these examples. But what what the slides don't show you is the process. They show you the product of how to do it, but they don't show you the process. So the way I would encourage you to do it is to actually do it backwards. So typically, when you do these, and this will be in my 
I'll, I'll have another video when, when we uh, get going with this a bit more. But if I was gonna show you this example, but show you the process, if this is the question, convert this many minutes to hours, my target, which is my unknown, is hours, right? A number of hours. Uh, my known or my input is minutes. So I'm gonna construct it backwards. So I know that I need hours as a product. So I write hours initially like this. Hours equals hours. Then I'm looking for an equality that I know will link hours to minutes. Well, I know that 60 minutes is an hour. That's something that I'd be expected to know at my age. Um, so I know that 60 minutes equals one hour divided by, or one hour equals 60 minutes. But because I want hours as a numerator, I know to select the one that has hours as a numerator. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And then I know to put minute up here to cancel it with this minute here because there's no minute in my answer. My input now becomes relevant. So I put my five, four, four, five in, and then I put my answer in. Okay, so that was the process. So you construct There was no save in that sentence. It was just plagued with issues from the beginning. When the world tells you to erase, listen very carefully. Okay. You construct from right to left, but then you read obviously from left to right. Okay. So some of you might not like that. Some of you might want to, or you're used to doing it left to right. That's fine, but it's a poor technique. The, as you progress through science and through this course as a, as a starting point, these dimensional analysis equations will get longer. It becomes less and less likely that you'll be able to go left to right. So if you've taken an introductory chemistry class and you've managed to go from left to right, that's because you're in an introductory chemistry class. But as you get to more advanced chemistry classes and other science classes, it becomes a lot more nonsensical to do it that way. So I would encourage you start practicing a good habit now. Um, and you'll find less obstacles to your mastery of this technique if you get used to constructing right to left. Okay, and that essentially is all I wanted to say about this video. There are 14 slides in this slide deck. Um, and yeah, I'll have a separate video specifically on dimensional analysis. I just wanted to bring this up because I'm posting this um, in the first week. Um, so I just wanted to alert you that always show your workings in lecture and lab using dimensional analysis. That was, that was the message. So I'll leave it there.